It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Reaction, Beanie Yo 467. Day in the neighborhood, my brothers and sisters. It is that time to get into another one of these true crime, horror, dark, deep, and mysterious what the is going on type of videos. And today, we are going back to our home, boy. None other than Kyle from Dyer Trip. Go on back to Dyer Trip, y'all. Hope y'all doing excellent day out the other day. And I'm glad that you came on back to the channel once again to fuck with the bean. And the title of the video is The YouTubers Who Died While Filming Videos, Volume 2. Now, the main thing I'm wondering, y'all, the main thing I'm wondering, just being for real, is how many of these freaking YouTubers out here that we're about to watch in this video going to be the ones who literally putting their life on the line just to get some views. You know what I'm saying, man? Like putting their life in dangerous situations, life or death situations, just so they can get somebody to like their video and share their video and get impressions and all that. Like there are so many people out here who do so many crazy crazy things just to feel justified by social media my brothers and sisters and i'm just wondering that's just my first thought how many of those people we're about to see today i don't know but we finna go and check it out but before we check it out my brothers and sisters y'all know what y'all got to do get whatever you might need get what you need please we back to kyle from dial trip Y'all got what y'all need, y'all ready to go? Then let's and go. YouTube is a platform with millions of users from different countries all over the world. While the platform has brought countless of hours of entertainment to people all over the planet, there's no doubt that there are some darker, seedier corners of the platform out there that we've been diving into in this series. We've seen that there are plenty of people out there who want to push their content to the absolute limit, and this doesn't always work out in their favor. Sometimes nope. they perform dangerous or even fatal stunts completely on purpose. So yep. let's take a look at even more YouTubers who have lost their lives while filming their videos, some of them on livestream as their viewers watched in horror. Get whatever you might need. Ape Tor. Tor Etchkoff was a 57-year-old Norwegian man who was better known online as Ape Tor on YouTube. He was mainly known for getting absolutely plastered on vodka and doing all sorts of extreme activities that usually related to the cold, like ice skating around on scattered bits of thin ice and submerging himself in bathtubs full of ice and vodka bottles. Apator first started his YouTube career all the way back in 2006 when he uploaded a video called In My Boat, where, as you may guess, he showed his boat. Apator was a simple guy living in a coastal city and working in a paint factory. However, people really came to like his antics, and after several years on YouTube, his career suddenly boomed in August of 2018 when he hit 200,000 subscribers. After only a few more years, he finally hit that 1 million mark that we all strive for. Most of his videos consisted of the same few bits he was known for, drinking copious amounts of alcohol, playing around in cold water, and hopping into bathtubs full of ice nearly naked. His 
Hey, it's that one thing I got to give April to a credit for, y'all. He was like one of the pioneers of YouTube. Did you hear what Kyle said, man? He started his channel, what he said, 2006 or 2008, something like that. Dude, that is the very beginning of YouTube. That is way different than we know it to this day. And he was one of the first ones, y'all. Anybody in that time period. You know what I'm saying? So I just found that to be very cool. But it's crazy also that he been doing this type of stuff for years now. It's been years now. And he didn't Nothing happened to him But Eventually I guess It all catch up All oh, those my brothers And sisters Whatever I don't know How he finna He probably finna die In the ice or something I don't know man One of these stunts Finna finally catch up to him And end his life Let's see a series called On Thin Ice was one of his most well-known, where he would skate around on partially melted ice in a very dangerous yet comedic fashion. He fell into the water a lot of the time, as expected, which people found pretty funny. However, Apador's life would come to take a dark turn in 2018 when he was diagnosed with cancer. This cancer Damn. wouldn't be the end of him, though. It would be something else. On November 22nd of 2021, Apador posted his final video, titled... I am not dead, I am 57 today, where he celebrated his 57th birthday in a video for his fans. Only four days later though, the title of this final video would prove to be ironic in the worst sort of way. Four days after posting his final video, Apador was filming his next video in some icy water near Jacob's Dam in Norway. He was filming a video for his ice skating series when he fell into the ice cold water and couldn't get out. When he was seen falling through the ice, help was called and a helicopter soon came out to rescue him from the ice. They took him to a nearby hospital, but it seems that he was found to be in a coma. The decision was made to take him off of life support after many attempts to save his life failed. Apidor's Dang. fans, as well as the greater YouTube sphere, were saddened to hear the news of his demise. He is still remembered fondly as the goofy old man who got drunk and enjoyed himself in the ice-cold waters of Norway. Seeing someone behind such a light-hearted, goofy channel meeting their end in such a way was nothing short of devastating to his fans. Yeah, that one right here, y'all, it just sucks because it do, do seem like a great little old man. You know how you be the old person who you think just cool as fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like, he a cool, funny dude, and I just hate he end up going out that, like that, but I did call it, y'all. I said he probably end up falling in the ice, man. Like, when you keep doing dangerous stuff over and 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 over again, and he been doing it for years. It's going to eventually catch up to you, man. More more times than not. More times than not. But rest in peace to him. Greg Plitt. George Gregory Plitt Jr. was a fitness model, actor, and inspirational YouTuber from America. Originally from Lutherville, Maryland, his mother was an interior designer and his father was a real estate agent. He really admired his older sister, though, who joined the U.S. Naval Academy. Partially as a result of this, Greg got very into fitness. When he was in the sixth grade, his father bought a new home gym set up. Admiring his sister's physical strength, Greg quickly got into fitness himself and he never stopped. Being a part of the Gilman School class of 1996 in Baltimore, he was on the football team, the wrestling team, and even on the golf team. Eventually, he went on to graduate from the U.S. Military Academy class of 2000 himself before serving in the U.S. Army as a ranger for five years. Returning to civilian life, Greg took his love of fitness and made a career out of it, becoming a personal trainer in Los Angeles. People took notice of his physique, and he was able to get some acting roles. His body was actually used to create the 3D model of Dr. Manhattan and the Watchmen, as well as the corpse of General Zod in Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Wow, dude. But I ain't gonna lie, man. He do look like he got, like, the perfect body. You know what I'm saying? Especially for using in media, movies, TV shows, ads, commercials, magazines. Like, he got the perfect physique. I ain't gonna lie about that. He modeled for all sorts of magazines and appeared in ads for different fitness-related products as well. Little did he know, this would ultimately lead to his death in a freak accident. Oh. Greg Plitt was filming an ad for a protein shake in Burbank, California in January of 2015. For the ad, he was being filmed running between different railroad tracks. This was when a train running southbound hit him. The entire incident was filmed, also on the onboard camera of the train as well. 
Police, upon examining the video, believed that Greg was trying to outrace the train for his video when he was suddenly knocked off the track and fell out of frame. It trying to outrace the train? That, I don't know if that's true, y'all. Uh, Kyle just said the police believe that's what he was doing. You know what I'm saying? It ain't confirmed, and I hope that's not the truth. Nobody think they can outrun a freaking train. Like, I know his body looked like Superman, but he ain't got the speed like Superman. And I don't think that's what he was doing. I don't know, though, man. You never know. But I, 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 I just feel better not thinking that to be true. Let's go. It seems that Greg believed the train was actually approaching from the track next to his, not on the one he was on. In the video, he meant to run parallel to the train, not in front of it. Either way, it seems that the train did blow the horn several times and Greg still didn't take notice. An innocent mistake for a video sadly led to the loss of a beloved YouTuber. Many people out there, mainly young men into fitness, still tune into his motivational videos to show their respects and take some of his advice. And it's just so sad when you think about how he died, y'all. He got ran over by a freaking train. You can't even imagine that pain. You know what I'm saying? That that contact when it hit. Oh, my God. Jesus. Rest in peace to him, too. Let's go. This has been good so far. Hobostobe. Here we have the story of James William Stobie, known on YouTube by the handle Hobostobe, or sometimes Stobe the Hobo. James was a man known for his videos relating to a hobby of his, train hopping. James uploaded his first video in February of 2012, slowly gaining a small following over time. He would film himself illegally hopping onto trains all over the United States and then make videos about the locations he would travel to. James' fans and Redditors alike would often warn against imitating his antics. They would attempt to make it clear that hopping trains is not only extremely dangerous, but also a federal crime that could possibly lead to some serious jail time. It wasn't a lifestyle that one should romanticize, with train hoppers noting that the novelty wears off pretty quickly. Many warn that the act was so dangerous that many train hoppers end up getting killed. James, however, did not take note. He continued making videos for his modest collection of 11,000 subscribers to enjoy. People found his videos to be a good mixture of thrilling and relaxing. Hopping on each train was a dangerous act all in its own, but watching James relax and enjoy the scenery while on the train was oddly mesmerizing. James would often film himself stocking up on beer, chicken, or some good old gas station wine before checking out his map and heading out on his journeys. He, living a mostly solitary life, enjoyed being seen and heard on his channel and engaging with his community. He would continue to do so until he uploaded his last video, leaving it unlisted for unknown reasons. On November 9th of 2017, James would come to film his last video. While filming, he failed in his attempt to hop onto an Amtrak train. What and this is just another one of those videos like the previous one, y'all, where I be, uh, like the first one, where I'm just like, man, it all come back to you. It catches up with you eventually. You know what I'm saying? He just kept doing this train hopping stuff, knowing how dangerous it was, and they caught up with him. One report stated that his bag became tangled in the mechanism, falling him to fall next to the train and ultimately be dragged to his death. Another said that he fell from a bridge after being struck by the train, causing him to fall to his death and land on another bridge. Given that the Baltimore Police Department remained quiet about what exactly happened to him, the exact details of his death still aren't known to this day. What we do know is that, due to his dangerous lifestyle, he lost his life that fateful day. Fans of Hobisto would flock to his Facebook page to express their sadness at hearing of his death. One wrote, he died doing what he loved, bringing the world his art of train filmmaking. Another said, Stobe was an artist. He played the piano for all his videos. His cinematography and film editing, his commentary and vocabulary, and his perspectives were a true art form. I hope you get the time to enjoy all his videos and share them with your friends. And whoever said that uh, first quote most definitely got a, uh, may have a point. He died doing what he loved. You know what I'm saying? That, that is a point to make about, because I never judge nobody when they died. Like, I'm not judging these people just because they died doing something that they wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm not condemning them for it. You know what I'm saying, man? And 
if you, you go out like you people know the dangers of being a sky day sky diver or whatever may have you you know what i'm saying it's a lot of stuff that's dangerous in life and we know the risk that we take and i'm never condemning anybody for that they really had a point man he died doing what he loved let's go whirlpool hitman Jacob Cockle, known on YouTube as Whirlpool Hitman, was a YouTuber that was particularly fascinated in all things related to whirlpools. In some of his videos, he would even jump into the whirlpools himself while filming throughout Estuary and the United Kingdom. His videos got millions of views over time, making him a good chunk of change along the way. However, as enticing as the whirlpools were, much like train hopping, this was a very dangerous hobby. Many people die when getting too close to whirlpools, as oftentimes the current is too strong for them to escape and they ultimately drown. Jacob wasn't scared though, and this lack of fear would lead to his untimely end. Jacob was fascinated with one particular whirlpool that he had previously seen a couple of times when that same whirlpool reappeared on the 28th of May in 2013. In his excitement, he ran off to get into his wetsuit and grab his camera. He, like he did in some previous videos, put on a large rubber horse mask to further entertain his audience. His friend David agreed to film as he swam around in the water. David shot a lot of footage, but Jacob wanted to keep filming and make the most of it for as long as they could. David began to notice that the whirlpool seemed to be getting pretty strong, to which Jacob responded, Oh yeah, earlier on it was really scary. It's fine now because it's so deep, but when I first got in, I was a bit scared to be honest. It's safe now, though. Shortly after, Jacob got- Shit, ain't no whirlpool ever safe to me. Now, I will say this too, y'all, man. A lot of these things that people love out here, love doing, I, me personally, I, hell no. I'm not getting in no type of whirlpool, you know what I'm saying? I'm not skydiving ever. I'm not going freaking scuba diving, you know what I'm saying? I'm never doing none of that craziness, man. But some people really love doing that stuff, y'all. They really freaking love doing it. And this wor a whirlpool? Man, please, I'm not going near that. Got caught in the increasingly strong current and began to be pulled down. That was pretty scary, he exclaimed as he nearly got caught underwater. He asked to be past the GoPro camera to film one last shot underwater. After submerging, Jacob never came back out. David ran back and forth down the coast, asking anyone and everyone if they had seen him reappear, but nobody had. After a while, David saw him, floating in the water face down, far off from where he originally went underwater. The current had spat him out in a pool down the way. David swam out to him, but it was very obvious that his friend was already gone. The police came out and Jacob was taken to a nearby hospital where he was soon pronounced dead. An autopsy found that Jacob did drown, but also found that he had traces of ketamine in his system at the time of his death. His mother released a statement shortly after about his death, saying, In his short lifetime, Jacob lived life to its fullest. He achieved more than most people can only dream about. He saw no danger in either people or situations. Jacob was a free spirit. Rest in peace to Jacob, man. Rest in peace to him. BJ Mveli. Lim Ji-hye was a South Korean model, actress, and live streamer better known by her online handle, BJ Mveli. She began her career as a racing model in 2006, but soon came to perform similar gigs for martial arts matches. She got a small role acting in a film called Sunflower before ultimately gaining most of her fame as a live streamer starting in 2009. For a short time, she retired after getting married in 2014. Her career went back into full swing after divorcing in 2018, though. That was when she resumed her career as a model and streamer. She became most popular on both YouTube and an app called Africa TV. One fateful night, BJ went to film a live stream with a group of other streamers, broadcasted live to all of their mutual fans. While getting drunk on stream, BJ got into an argument with another female streamer that soon became a physical fight. After the stream got too heated, she returned home and opened up her personal live stream. On this live stream, she sat alone at home, unloading all of her pent-up feelings onto her audience, the only people she felt might understand her. Her tearful stream quickly snowballed to the point where BJ was writing her last will and testament there on stream for her fans to see. She abruptly apologized to her family, stood up, and walked out of frame. 
The live stream silently continued. Twenty minutes later, though, emergency services arrived to her room, coming into frame. One of them could be heard yelling, get the scissors, before someone else ended the live feed. BJ was taken to the hospital in critical condition, but ultimately she passed away. She was pronounced dead at the age of 37. Her obituary was posted to her Instagram account, but the whole account was made private shortly after. Her fans expressed their condolences across all of her social media accounts, in disbelief at the sudden nature of what had happened there right in front of them. Man! That is absolutely terrible, man. That is sad as freak fuck. I'm gonna say the word fuck, my brothers and sisters. That is sad as fuck, man. She killed herself because she got in an argument with some another YouTube streamer at a party? And that made her go back to the house, get on stream, and basically write her will out or her final words or whatever, and then actually took her life? Man, y'all, it, it's never that serious. It is never that serious to take your own life. I don't care what you're going through, man. I don't, and it may be a little bit more than that. That may have just been the tipping point, you know what I'm saying? The final straw that broke the camel's back right there. But as far as the argument with the uh, other lady, it, live streamer, whoever, but whatever you going through man just don't stop keep going and goddamn always remember after the darkest night it's gonna come a brighter day it may goddamn rain and be storming for a while it may be some days it may be some weeks maybe some months sometime it could be years but one of these days the sun gonna come back out remember that man that is sad y'all let's go Twisted Intentions. Here we have a small gaming YouTuber named Colton Gibson Wood, online handle Twisted Intentions, with a community of roughly 300 subscribers. Nevertheless, he was a dedicated YouTuber. He mainly played video games on stream, usually The Division, but he would also stream himself riding his motorcycle around town. While most of his videos barely got any views, he was gaining some traction, with his view counts rising from being in the hundreds to being in the thousands over time. One day, Colton was filming one of his usual motorcycle streams, talking to his fans while riding around. A while into the stream, it appeared to his fans that he noticed something was wrong. He exclaimed that his front brakes were out. He began to panic, but then said, You're gonna see something. Fuck it. Fuck it while speeding heavily down the road. He was being so extremely reckless that people weren't sure if he was actually trying to crash his bike or not. Some of his last words were, don't be stupid on fucking bikes. The stream ended in a loud crash before the feed was cut. Shortly after, the video was removed from YouTube. Because of that, his fans knew that it must be pretty bad. They were prepared for the worst, and that's what they soon came to hear. The Spartanburg County Coroner released the name of a man who had recently died after his motorcycle was in a collision with a pickup truck. The truck was traveling west and the bike was going east when the truck made a left turn without having the right-of-way, leading to the motorcyclist crashing into it. The driver of the bike was launched from his vehicle and injured upon hitting the pavement. He was transferred to the hospital, but he ultimately couldn't survive his severe injuries despite wearing a helmet. He was pronounced dead shortly after at the hospital. The driver of the pickup truck wasn't injured, but he was hit with the charge of failing to yield to the right-of-way. And I'm just going to tell y'all a quick story real quick. Long story, short story, long. I'm not going to make this too long, my brothers and sisters. This is what happened earlier while I was going home. A mother pulled out in front of me. What a to the point where I'm, I'm starting to get mad thinking about it. To the point where I had to literally slam on my brakes and come to a complete stop. Because if I did not, I was going to end up hitting them. And I'm just saying that to say that this just reminded me of that. Because this truck is the reason that this man is dead right now. You know what I'm saying, y'all? Because they was at fault. They turned and they didn't have the freaking right of way. And that person jumped out in front of me and damn sure ain't have no right of way, dude. Like, I'm telling y'all, man, I could have. It could have been bad, man. It could have been bad. 
that would have been horrible because I'm going like 50 miles per hour and one car pulled out in front, but they, they was good. You know, it was enough distance. But for some reason, this mother want to pull out in front of me and I almost told they ass up, my brothers and sisters. And, and then when I ride past, I'm looking at them just to see how they looking because I know they know they didn't, they, they almost elfed up. They did elfed up, but this could have been an elfed up situation. So I'm looking at them. And they ain't even looking. They looking down at their phone. They looking down at their phone like they don't see me because they know they just did some fucked up ass shit, man. But it's just like, man, long story short, short story long, it just let you know, man. And please, my brothers and sisters, watch out for the other man out here on the road or the other lady. Watch out for the other drivers. Not just watch out for yourself. You got to watch out for them, too. You know what I'm saying? I digress. Let's go. ZL0, also known as Schwabe. This is a case that is even darker than some of the others, the case of Schwabe Naz Aslam, who went by the name ZL0 on YouTube, but also by the name Schwabe. Schwabe was a Pakistani teenager who was living in the United States when he first made his YouTube channel at the age of 11 in 2011. Schwabe was very openly depressed and mentally ill. He was a big anime fan, watching it obsessively, making a note that he mainly only watched, in his own words, to survive. This likely meant that it was mainly a form of escapism that he found necessary to keep going. His mental mm. health issues worsened over time until he turned 18 in 2018. Schwabe started to openly fantasize about becoming a school shooter, but did his best to make it clear to his friends and family that these were merely just fantasies. He also began to idolize the incel spree killer, Elliot Roger, expressing his admiration for him in text messages to his friends. These fantasies did nothing to improve his mental state, though. All they served to do was make his parents lose trust in him and feel that they needed to watch over him more closely, which was a fair assessment. What they- Hell yeah, that's a fair assessment, man. You can't- that is- the, the, those are not fantasies that a regular person have where you can just blow over it and be like, oh, okay, it's just a thought. No, that is not a thought, man. You literally fantasize them about killing a whole bunch of kids in school. You know what I'm saying? That is nothing to play with, man. So I don't blame his parents. But let's go. What he didn't do, though, was take away his access to a gun. On March 14th of 2018, Schwabe was talking to a few friends over text. After a while, he opened up a call with them, asking them to start recording. Afterwards, he opened up a stream on YouTube and he asked them if they could hear him. He began to express to them that he was going to end his own life. One cried and begged him to stop, but others thought that he was merely making some tasteless jokes as he was laughing along the way. Schwabe had two notes with him. One of them said, goodbye R9K, with R9K being the incel forum on 4chan. The other note said, goodbye mom, with an additional bit of text that begged his mother to, quote, not let the kids see. Schwabe, only having 18 subscribers on YouTube, continued his live stream only titled, Hey. Schwabe was on screen, wearing a neck gator mask with a cat vomiting a rainbow and a black beanie. Behind him, a blue tarp was tacked up on the wall. Six minutes into the stream, he pulled out a gun and showed the camera. He then abruptly shot himself in the head, knocking over the camera and causing the tarp to fall to the ground. The stream would continue for over 40 minutes as his friends and other viewers expressed their shock at what had just happened. Eventually, his mother walked into the room and started crying. She moved the tarp to find her son's body and began to scream. Eventually, the live stream ended and was removed to YouTube shortly after. His friends still mourn his death to this day. Hold on, man. There's one little plot hole that I got in that story. And I don't know. I don't know. It's just a plot hole as far as what Kyle told us. He said that the mama walked in, but it had been 40 minutes since he actually had shot himself. You know what I'm saying? So the mama must was not at home when it actually happened. There had to been nobody else at this house because somebody would have heard this gunshot. It shouldn't have taken her 40 minutes to walk in that room if she was there when she heard it. So that's just a little plot twist. But man, this is just another sad one, man, of people taking their lives over nothing. This one right here, I have no idea why he freaking took his life at all. Other than he was just dealing with mental issues bad, man. He had some, he had some very traumatizing, like, 
thoughts in his head, y'all. So I don't know, man. God damn, bro, hearing stuff like that. Whew, it, it, it just always just make you take a deep breath, my brothers. So just make you take a deep breath. Let's finish it up. Once again, thank you for watching my video. If you found it interesting, please give it a like as it helps out in the algorithm, and feel free to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you have any suggestions for additional yeah man go like that man go subscribe to dial trip y'all if y'all ain't did that yet man if you over here watching my reaction to his goddamn videos make sure you get that man to subscribe and while you're there hit the like on his latest video and always do that man but um the last one like i said y'all like the last one man it's another one of those ones where i'm just like oh man bro people be out here taking their lives for no freaking reason even though I'm, I'm not trying to blame him because his mindset is way different than mine's and y'all's out there. You know what I'm saying? My brothers and sisters, we ain't thinking like he was thinking. Like his mindset and what was going on in his life and everything he was thinking about is so completely different. But it's still just sad, man. The other lady, you can kind of think maybe the argument had her so upset with the uh other stream at the party till it made her do that but it's still just like it's no reason for that man then the guys who uh passed away doing stuff that they kind of you could make the argument at, that they love to do it especially a couple of them now you also can play devil's advocate i'm just gonna say it and say that you can make the argument that the only reason that they doing this is because of the subscribers and stuff like i was mentioning before we even got into this video but that i want to change that a little bit now my brothers and sisters like these people in this video i don't feel like a lot of them was only just doing it just for the likes and the subscribers the thing i was talking about is when you get this person out of nowhere who don't have no history of doing some craziness like they was doing in this a lot of us would think was crazy like riding on thin ice with no clothes on and you drunk off vodka and stuff like that you know what i'm saying stuff that we would think was crazy but i'm talking about a person who have no history don't be making videos like that then all of a sudden one day they make a video like that because they just trying to go viral you know what i'm saying you're not even known for doing this bro what are you doing that's the people i'm really talking about these people in this video for the most part i don't feel like that's really was their only purpose for doing this i feel like they enjoyed doing their content and enjoyed doing what they were doing sort of like me right now like i really enjoy doing this and i enjoy putting it out and keep on showing y'all keep hanging with y'all like i'm talking to y'all right now i feel like i'm really having a conversation with y'all out there my brothers and sisters man i just freaking love it and just from this video from dial trip i feel like a lot of these people freaking loved it man and i I don't know if i said it but i'll say it again another freaking great video from dial trip my brothers and sisters crazy though crazy though crazy though how some of these people all uh, went out man how some of these people went out just ah uh, it's just like man you ain't have to go that way but i digress i'm gonna be quiet now y'all i appreciate y'all coming on back as always y'all please 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 before you leave make sure that you hit that like button comment and subscribe if you ain't did that yet and come on back tomorrow for another coffee man friday but until then my friends also remember this Love, peace, and happiness. Stay safe. Don't stop. Keep going. Yeah.